This is the best thing I've ever bought off Amazon. All right, so today I'm finally gonna be sharing with you guys what I've been using on my skin since starting Accutane. So today is actually exactly three months on Accutane. When I'm filming this, I did my blood work this morning. I think I still have the thing on. Yep, forgot about that until this moment. Since starting Accutane, this has probably been my most requested video to make. And I wanted to wait a few months to make this video just so I could thoroughly try everything out, see what works for me, see what doesn't work for me. There's definitely been products that I have eliminated that my skin did not like. So I feel like the ones I'm using right now are pretty solid. This routine has been working really well for me. I don't have a three month update for you guys. I'm gonna be doing a four month update because my three month lab work results are coming back the same day I'm leaving out of the country. And as far as everything else, it's been exactly the same as my two month update. So I'm gonna link that down below if you wanna know more about Accutane and I go really in depth about everything there. So I'll link that video down below. But here's my face at the three month point for those of you following along. I have a couple down here. I'm still getting some breakouts and stuff, but I mean 50 billion times clearer than when I started. And I'll leave the acne story video down below too if you're just stumbling across this video. So this routine and some of these products are really just for dry skin folks, those of you out there. So basically I've been using a lot of these products since day one of starting just to kind of hopefully prevent some of the dryness and I think it has really helped. I haven't seen the major, major like severe dryness that a lot of people talk about. Some people say it comes at the four month point, so we'll see. My lips have been the driest of anything, but as far as my skin, I think the products I've been using have really been helping. So I'm excited to share them with you guys. Hopefully if you have really dry skin or normal to dry skin, some of these products will work really well for you too. So I'm gonna talk you guys through everything I do in the morning and at night as far as skincare. I'm talking for like 5,000 hours right now probably none of this is necessary. Let's get into the products. So if you're excited for this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up while you're watching. If you're new here, you can join the Bay Rito family and subscribe. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Keep in mind, if you are an Accutane, anything you put on your skin, you want it to be really basic, really gentle. Typically, like fragrance for you, really basic stuff. No retinols, no glycolic acid or anything like that. Just really basic. So I think I'm going to start out with nighttime. It's nighttime. It's been a good day. I'm taking off my makeup. Best part of the night. And the products I've been using to remove my makeup have been oils. I haven't really enjoyed using my usual Neutrogena wipes just because it's just more tugging at your skin and everything. And if your skin is feeling kind of sensitive and dry, oils are just much more pleasant to put on your face. And these two get the job done. So this is the Fresh Seaberry Cleansing Oil and then also the Polish Choice Perfect Cleansing Oil. I really like both of these. They don't burn my eyes. They take off all of my waterproof eye makeup, all of my foundation, everything. And they just give your skin this really glowy, tight kind of look without being uncomfortably tight. You know how some of those oils leave your skin like super tight, but there's no residue. That's the one thing I hate with oils. I know you use a cleanser after. Just personally, I hate the feeling of having that oil residue left over. They just feel like really light cleansing oils and they're great. So the cleanser I've been using morning and nighttime. This thing is like the love of my life. I highly recommend this for any skin type, even if you have oily skin. I wish I knew about this when I had oily skin because it's just a great cleanser. This is the CeraVe Hydrating Facial Cleanser. It has ceramides and hyaluronic acid in it. You can get CeraVe from the drugstore. CeraVe if you're on Accutane and Cetaphil, but as far as like things I've read and research I've done, CeraVe has a little bit better ingredients, but those are kind of two safe drugstore brands if you're on Accutane. They're very gentle. Most dermatologists will recommend one of the two. This is the only cleanser you need. It has this really nice, almost milky, soft kind of consistency. That was hard to get out. Consistency to it? Said that 10 times. It does leave your skin feeling a bit more moisturized without leaving a kind of film on your skin. Get this. So after I go in with that cleanser morning and night, I'll also go in with this toner by Mario Badescu. This is the aloe vera toner. This I like, I just find this very basic. I don't really think it majorly, you know, moisturizes or hydrates my skin or anything, but just for a basic gentle toner, I do like this one. Also a lot of these recommendations I got from either Gothamista or Stephanie Nicole, I've mentioned both of them before. They're great and have a shit ton more knowledge than I do about skincare. So if you wanna know more about ingredients and everything, they go really in depth about that on their channels. But Stephanie recommended the Shiseido Facial Cotton. I don't know how I haven't been using these my entire life because there's literally no point to waste money on the shitty drugstore ones that like peel apart all the time on you because these are so nice. These are very large pads. So if you cut them in half, you'll get 
double the uses out of them, obviously. And when you do that, they're around the same price as the ones that you can get at the drugstore. So you can get these on Sephora. They're great, they don't shed. These are great for using the toner with. And usually I actually don't have very much makeup, if any, left over after using the oil cleansers and then the hydrating cleanser. I really like using a toner just so I can make sure that everything's off and I can see if I missed any areas or whatever. So kind of everything up until that point is the same morning and night. This is where it kind of goes two different directions. So we're gonna start with nighttime. I am all about face masks. There's something that's so relaxing and just satisfying about putting on a good face mask. And I actually in the past have hated sheet masks and I finally found one that is amazing. I love this one. This is by Misha. It's a pure source cell sheet shea butter mask. I love this because when I take it off, when I take off the sheet mask, it actually has totally absorbed into my skin. And my skin looks and feels visibly more moisturized. I feel like this one actually does something. I've been staying completely away from any of the detoxifying or clay masks, anything that I used to use when I had acne oily skin. I've been only using sheet masks or masks that are hydrating or like a gel mask. So some nights I'll use a sheet mask if I feel like I need a little more extra moisture. I just wanna keep my skincare routine as basic as possible, use minimal but effective products that are actually gonna do something. So if I'm not using a sheet mask or if I am, I'll go in with a moisturizer. I haven't been using a serum. I have been using some oils but I'll talk about that after, but usually I'll just go directly in with a moisturizer. So I have one very pricey one, high end, and then I also have a drugstore one. I wanna mention both of them because I do really enjoy both of these. Let me tell you what they are first. So this is the Murad Hydrodynamic Ultimate Moisture Cream. I think this thing is like 75 bucks. Like this is friggin' pricey. This is definitely more of a splurge moisturizer. This is the CeraVe Skin Renewing Night Cream. I've had this for... I want to say a month and a half now, and I'm almost out of this. This is amazing. Again, from the drugstore CeraVe. This one is definitely a thick nighttime kind of cream. Wouldn't want to be putting this on in the morning, probably before your makeup. I like to use something a little bit lighter. But if you're someone who likes that really thick, heavy feeling moisturizer, which I actually do at night, I really like that rather than like a really lightweight gel kind of one. This, since I started using it, I feel like has done wonders for my skin. My skin has been flake free since I started using this stuff. It is great. I think it's around 15 bucks. You can usually get CeraVe products, either buy one, get one half off or buy one, get one free at drugstores. So obviously quite a bit more affordable than the Murad one. This one is interesting because it's super moisturizing, but it's very lightweight. So if you're someone who doesn't like the thick creams like this, you might like this one better. There's something about this that leaves your skin feeling so baby soft. This one you could definitely use underneath makeup as well. You could use this one morning and night. This one has hyaluronic acid in it. I believe the CeraVe one does too. By the way, I've been traveling so much and on different planes and everything, and this throughout all of the traveling has still kept my skin not super dry. This is all I brought with me over the holidays for my nighttime moisturizer. I didn't bring any oils or anything and it was working great. So it's kind of like an oil before moisturizer or after moisturizer debate. From the things that I've read, it seems like after is the way to go because oil can penetrate moisturizer, but not vice versa. Correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know, you're actually supposed to put on oils as your last step. So oils are something for me that has been really hard to find something that doesn't break me out and that doesn't totally freak out my skin. I think I talked about this in the two month update video, but I tried out a jojoba oil, totally caused my skin to get like the comedones and then also weird roughness, like super, super rough. As I've been trying out all this stuff, by the way, I've been trying to add in one product at a time just so I know what's doing what. So I ended up cutting that out. It was the jojoba oil that was causing that. And then I tried the fresh Seaberry moisturizing facial oil. I have this one on right now. It's where I'm getting the glow from right now. I don't think I would recommend this yet because I don't feel like it's made a huge difference in my skin. I've used this for a few weeks at a time, then I'll stop using it for a couple weeks. And I really don't notice a big difference yet with this. Maybe it's something that you need to use for a longer period of time to really notice the difference. I almost get like a weird itch with this one when I have it on. I'm gonna keep using it and see if I like it more as I continue to use it, but I wanted to mention it because it is in my routine currently. The other oil I'm trying that a ton of you guys recommended is the Ordinary Rosehip Oil. This is like, what, five or eight bucks? I think Sephora actually carries the Ordinary now, which rocks. The Ordinary basically has bomb skincare ingredients for super affordable prices. The rosehip oil is supposed to be really great for acne and scarring and everything. So I've been starting to use this one. I've only been using this for about a week and a half maybe. So I haven't been using this long enough to see any kind of difference. So far, I don't think it's broken me out, which is good. So that's a good sign. I'm gonna keep using this one. So that's what I do at nighttime as far as my face. 
I guess this is still in my face, but then I'll go in with an eye serum. So I've been using one of three. <laughs> This is one I used in the morning, the Autocorrect by Sunday Riley. It has a really nice brightening effect to it. It's really nice for deep puffing and giving the look of brighter under eyes. I like using this even if I'm not wearing any makeup that day because it just makes you look awake. And then the two I've been switching between at night are the CeraVe Eye Repair Cream. High End Total Splurge is the Drunk Elephant Shaba Complex Eye Serum. I don't really know which one I like better yet. This one is definitely more pleasant to apply. It has this really nice twist bottle and it really absorbs into your skin. It really is like a serum, less of a cream. This one basically just feels like an eye cream. Nothing super thick, nothing super thin, but apparently there are good ingredients in here that actually do something. So they say, we will see, time will tell. That was a lot of quotes right there. So the only thing I do different in the morning is the moisturizer and then I'll incorporate an SPF. So for morning moisturizer, I'll use the CeraVe Daily Moisturizing Lotion. This also has hyaluronic acid in it. it. This feels much more lightweight than this one in the jar. This one is just very basic. It's the job done, keeps my skin moisturized. It's not scented or anything and it doesn't break me out. So this has been working really well underneath makeup and everything while still keeping me moisturized. And then for an SPF, I've been using the Elta MD SPF 45. My dermatologist recommends this. You can get this off of Amazon. They make one with tint in it. I don't wanna get that because the tint is usually way too dark, but this one is very white, but I almost like it because it cancels out some of the redness on my face because my face is way darker and redder than my neck right now. So this kind of helps to make it a little bit more even. So I'll use that last after the daily moisturizer or I'll do one or the other because this one is actually pretty moisturizing on its own. And if you saw my dry skin foundation routine, I go more in depth about the products I use to prep my skin before makeup. So I'll link that video in the eye over here and down below. One thing that I use kind of wherever, whenever I feel like is the Pixi Hydrating Milky Mist. This has hyaluronic acid in it and black oat. And this I really just like for literally whenever if I have makeup on, if I don't have makeup on, underneath makeup. This one just has a lot of different uses for it. And the spritzer on this bottle is an experience on its own. It's pretty great. A spritzer that is not so great is the Rose Water and Glycerin Heritage Store. You can get this off of Amazon. The only reason why I don't reach for this one a whole lot over this is because of the spritzer on here. It's horrible. It goes everywhere, it like gets in your hair. So I need to get a different top for this. This one is great if you just want something with a little bit more basic ingredients, you can go underneath your makeup, over your makeup to set it. Kind of the same uses as this one. This is really affordable. I think it's like 10 bucks on Amazon. You get a ton of product, you get eight fluid ounces in here. So if you have dry skin, you probably have dry lips too. If you're on Accutane, you definitely have dry lips. My holy grail, like if you were gonna buy one thing out of the three lip products I'm going to talk about that's actually going to do something get the aquaphor healing ointment this is not the lip product they also have one in a tube that one is not nearly as good as this this is the healing ointment it really does help keeps your lips coated I use this probably literally at least 20 times throughout the day I'll use this at night I use it in the morning anytime I don't have anything on my lips I'll usually go in with that if I want to switch it up or if I want something a little bit more thick and like tacky for the nighttime for sleeping in. The Bite Agave Lip Mask, I do really like. I didn't like this when I first started using it before Accutane, I've actually been using this for probably like four months now I wanna say. But once my lips start getting drier, I do feel like this helps. This one, I don't like how it feels on my lips. You can't really do anything in this. This is really for putting on right before you go to sleep because it is very sticky. I don't know why they made this packaging for this product. It really should just be a squeeze like lip applicator because the cap gets all sticky and everything. I've talked about this a ton, but this is the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. This one I like using basically instead of a lip gloss or a lip product where I want some kind of color to my lips. It has this really beautiful light pink color. Love using this on minimal makeup days. Still keeps some moisture in there. It doesn't do as much as as the aquaphor for me as far as dryness, but it just looks really nice over dry lips and it gives you a little bit of color and plumpness and it's just great. I'm almost out of this thing. Did I talk about everything I have sitting here? I think I did. So that's everything that I've been doing morning and night. Two things that I'm going to slowly be trying to incorporate in and try out. I wanna show you guys so I can do kind of follow up and talk about them later. This is the Soulceuticals Day Glow Serum. This has 20% vitamin C, ferulic acid, hyaluronic acid, and D-alpha, I don't even know what that is, anti-aging formula. So this got amazing reviews on Amazon. Vitamin C, again, is good for fading, scarring, and 
anti-aging, all that. You're supposed to use this in the morning after cleansing and toning and everything, but before your moisturizer. If you're on Accutane, your skin is already super sensitive to the sun, so just be aware if you do try this out, use it with an SPF for sure because vitamin C already makes your skin more sensitive. Something else I've been trying out that I've heard amazing things about by, I think Got The Mista talks a lot about this, but also on Amazon, people swear by this product on Amazon. This is the Hada Lobo Gokujun, I think that's how you say it, lotion. It's not a lotion, this is a Japanese product, and I think lotions in Japanese skincare are more, what would be the word for it? it they're basically like a, a water kind of product. It has a little bit more viscosity. It's not like a total liquid formula. It feels almost like a serum. I guess serum is what you'd call it. But it says after cleansing, pour a pea-sized amount to your palm and run between hands to heat and then pat it into your face until absorbed. And people swear by this for just adding hydration and giving you this really plump kind of look. I want to keep using this one. You can also do like a DIY sheet mask with this, which is really cool. Those are two other things that I'm trying out. But these, everything else I mentioned are the ones that just have been working amazing for my skin. I'm hoping that the dryness and everything just stays this amount throughout the rest of the three months because this is totally way, way better than I was anticipating. I thought my skin was gonna be like flaking off my face and I think it would be, again, without these products. So that's that. If there's anything that you guys think I should be trying out, let me know down below any products or tips or whatever. Let me know if you wanna see the six month video of kind of my top tops from the six month on Accutane, what I would recommend. I can't even put Accutane in the title of this video because it will get demonetized from YouTube. Thank you, YouTube letting creators just do their job. So four month Accutane update will be coming once I have the three month and four month lab results back. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and subscribe if you wanna stick around. I love you guys, thanks for watching. See you in my next video, bye.